Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Got a CCNP route video pop quiz for you. We're going to hit a couple of practice exam questions on the screen in about 15 seconds. And then what we're going to do is check out the answers on live Cisco routers as always. Also, just a quick word, even if you think you know the answers, stick around because we always add a little something extra to the demo while we're there. So let's go ahead and hit question one in your pop quiz today. What does the cost of an E2 route indicate? And boy, this is an important concept. You've got to have this absolutely straight on exam day. What does the cost of an E2 route indicate? And that would follow that the next question, what does the cost of an E1 route indicate? And let's head to question three. By default, how does an OSPF routing table indicate routes that were injected into the domain via redistribution? And of course, we were talking about OSPF with the E1 and E2 routes. I know you knew that. But here's a bonus question for you. Which of these are not valid OSPF route codes? Let's go ahead and head back to the first question. What does the cost of an E2 route indicate? This is a, an interesting concept here. What happens here with the E2 route is that this indicates the cost of the path from the ASVR to the destination network. When you see an E2 route and you see the cost, that does not indicate the cost of the path from the local router all the way to the destination. It's from the ASVR to that destination network. Now, I'm sure I gave you a hint there with E1. What does an E1 route indicate? That indicates the cost of the entire path, the cost of the path from the local router to the destination network. Now, as far as the default goes in the bonus question there, let's go ahead and head for the live equipment and take a quick look. I've got an adjacency, which we will always check, show IP OSPF neighbor. And we've got one that I took down before this lab, but this one obviously is to router three. And let's go ahead and go over to router three and run a show IP route OSPF. We shouldn't see anything at this point and we don't because there's an adjacency, but I'm not advertising any routes on Router 1 yet, uh, from Router 1. What I'll do is a quick redistributed connected subnets, and then we'll check out some defaults. Remember, redistribute connected is a legal command, but you're not going to get your subnets if you stop there. And let's head over to Router 3. And you can see these five routes now, and they are all marked E2. So that is indeed our default. And the reason I said I think it's an interesting default, and I know I kind of fell into this when I first started studying with OSPF, with route redistribution, I thought you would always be given the cost of the total path from the local router to the destination. Uh, but it is just not that way. That E2 is indeed the default, so your, your default is going to be OE2. Now, which of these are not valid route codes? Let's check our routing table. And the reason I put this in here, you know, you've got O for OSPF and then IA for the inter-area routes. You have E1s and E2s, which is what we've been talking about here. And these N1s and N2s, watch those because we don't talk about them a lot. But they're NSSA external type routes. And believe me, that is a subject for another video. But the one that you don't see here is OEX. You're not going to see that one at all because what you could see if you were running EIGRP, of course, is DEX. But if we go back to that routing table and look through it, you're not going to see anything with just O and then EX because the external route types are N1, N2, E1, and E2. So I just want to make sure you spotted that so you're ready for it on exam day. Thanks for taking today's CCNP Route Pop Quiz. Hope to see you on Twitter and on Facebook. And I'm Chris Bryant. Thanks for making TBA part of your Cisco certification success story.